As we prepare to take communion uh, together today, I want to encourage you to grab uh, the bread, the cup, or any elements that you might have that maybe resemble bread and juice or um, anything that you actually have in the pantry. So go and grab those things um, and use them. Please know that there's no um, requirement to have a certain kind of bread or a certain kind of cracker or a certain kind of grape juice or wine. Um, the elements are there as a symbol to remind us ultimately of what Jesus uh, did for us. And so uh, with that, once you get the elements, you can meet me in Matthew 26. I'm going to read uh, for us the account um, that Matthew records as we see the first communion meal shared together. Uh, Matthew writes there in verse 26 of Matthew 26, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. So much can be said about uh, communion. Uh, there's been um, years of debate and uh, even concern and dif disagreements about what Jesus meant when he said, take and eat. What's happening here? Um, I think at the most basic level, what we're seeing is Jesus using physical elements like food to remind us of what he was going to do for them. He says, take and eat, this is my body. In other words, it, it's symbolism. He's saying, look it. What these are, are, are physical nourishment, it's food, but it's also pointing to a spiritual reality, something that I'm going to actually do for you. Now, this was at a Passover meal. For Jesus' disciples, they would have understood this very clearly. The Passover was a way for them to remember what God did for God's people in delivering them from Egypt. And so this was a meal to celebrate. Uh, they would have eaten things that were both bitter and sweet to remind them of the hardships, but also the victory and the freedom that came. And so Jesus is taking a, a meal that they would have been very familiar with, and he's actually going to give new application when he says, take and eat, this is my body. In other words, he's pointing to not just an old exodus in which Israel was delivered from Egypt and the, the slavery that, that Pharaoh had placed on them, but he's going to deliver them from a new kind of exodus in which all of us, the world, is going to be freed from the tyranny of sin. Sin, which is a much more harsh and demanding slave master than any Pharaoh could ever be. Jesus is saying, through what I'm going to do, through the crucifixion, through my death, through my suffering, you're going to be set free and you're going to be forgiven. And he said, take and eat. He, he blessed this. In other words, he prayed, he thanked God for it, and he passed it around. He had all of them eat. And it says there in verse 27, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. It's amazing that Jesus, as he institutes this meal, says he's not going to take it anymore until we all take it one day again. And so when he first began there, there's a few things I want to point out. He talked about the covenant, the, the blood of the covenant. In other words, he's saying, um, as you drink this cup, it's going to be a symbol and a reminder of the way you and I will now connect to God. And the way that we connect to him is through forgiveness. We're forgiven by Christ because of what he has done for us. And so we're reminded of that. Every time we both eat bread and drink anything, we are going to uh, have an invitation to experience the fact that we're, we're forgiven by Jesus. And we do this in a unique way as we take communion and as we drink the juice, as we drink wine, whatever it is that we take, we get to experience the good news that you and I are no longer defined by our failures, our sins, um, the things that have enslaved us. We've now been set free and we have a new relationship with God. And I think that's important for us because Jesus says he's waiting to take it one day again. In other words, what you are right now is not what you will be one day. This meal is an appetizer of what's to come. And we take it as a way to, yes, remember what Jesus has done, but also to give us encouragement and faith and strength for the future, understanding that we're going to enjoy this meal once again with Jesus in his kingdom in, in the final reign in which sin and death have all been done away with and we are living in the new world, the, the, the life that God has always intended and for us. And so as we sit here in this present moment getting ready to take the elements together, we get to also be reminded of a day that is coming where you and I, we will actually all be at the same table together with Christ 
enjoying this meal. And so with that, I want us to uh, actually go through this process. And so with me, would you grab uh, your bread, your cracker, whatever you have, and let's take this together and be reminded of the body that Jesus allowed to be broken so that you and I can be uh, made new in him. Let's take this together. At the same meal, he took uh, the cup of wine, as we talked about. He passed it around. He said, take and drink. And so as we drink now, I want us to be reminded that we are forgiven in Christ. As you think about your position, um, maybe the things that have um, held you back this week, maybe the fears that you've had, the, the, the things in your daily life that have maybe kept you from God, kept you from experiencing joy and freedom and the reality that you're forgiven, why don't you take those things to him now? And as you drink this juice, be reminded that you are forgiven and new in Christ. Let's do this together. What I love so much about um, Matthew's take on this meal is uh, Matthew records that they went out and they sung a hymn afterwards. They ended with a song. Um, but then they traveled a little bit further ahead and Jesus said something to them that was actually very startling. He said, you're all going to betray me. <laughs> he quotes from the Old Testament about the sheep being scattered. And then he specifically speaks to Peter and talks about him denying Jesus. Not once, not twice, but three times. Now I share this because uh, it really just struck me that we go from this sacred moment, this meal with Jesus, to this teaching from him in which he says, all of us are going to be weak. Everyone's going to be tempted to betray him. And I think that's so um, human and so accurate to real life for us, in which we can go from a moment that we hope would, would maybe be transformational or powerful, because yes, we are experiencing the very presence of Jesus as we take communion. His body was given to us. We received the gift of life and forgiveness from him. But then we go back to regular life. We go back to real situations. We go back to real temptations. We go back to being real people and it can feel as though nothing has yet happened. And, and this, this meal that we're called to take uh, often seems like it has very little effect on our lives. But I think this story is inserted here as a reminder to us that the first sign that this is doing something in our lives is that we actually experience weakness. And I say that's the first sign because I think it calls for us this, this need in Christ, this need for Jesus, I should say. And so I want to encourage you, as you step away from this moment, um, be prepared to be weak. Be prepared to need Christ in a unique way and allow, yes, what you just did in taking the bread and the cup um, to be a reminder that you constantly are in need of God. And even more so, God desires to meet you in that need. And God desires to supply you with his grace and with his forgiveness. And so enjoy the gift of communion, but don't do so in a way that neglects you from just the gift of real life and the gift of needing Christ as well. And so uh, with that, let me pray for us as we end our time. God, we thank you so much for the gift of communion. God, we thank you for the opportunity to remember the body and the blood that was both broken and spilt for us. God, would you help us in this moment to declare our need for you, to be grateful for the gift that you offer us in both your presence, but also forgiveness. We pray that we would receive you and that we would be changed through this process. We thank you so much. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.